All right, today we're going to talk about uh, coaxial to waveguide transitions, talk about some antenna testing. Last time we were talking about waveguides and uh, the basic operation, how they work, talked about some geometry, a rectangular cross-section versus a circular cross-section. But I'm working on a project now that has uh, some practical uh, crossover with that, so I figured we'd uh, do a little whiteboard session and talk about that. Now, what I'm working on is uh, producing a coax, a coaxial uh, conductor where you have a... Uh, an outside conductor, an inside conductor, and then in between you have a, a dielectric layer. And what I'm trying to do is put a signal in or receive one out of a coaxial connector, and I need to transition into a waveguide because I'm doing an antenna test. So we have a, a little bit of a drawing here of a waveguide to coaxial transition. Now, what I'm doing is I'm uh, coming from the top of the waveguide, and this is what we would call a, uh, an E-plane probe. You can come from the back, that's a, your H-plane, your magnetic field plane probe. But for this, we're going to be using an E-plane. Now, what do I expect? Some things we talked about last time. We talked about standing wave ratio. Well, for the one I'm making, I'm expecting to have like a 1.1 or 1.2 to 1 type uh, standing wave ratio. And what I'm doing is I'm producing one that's not a standard one, like a, a WR90. This is an X-band antenna. X-band is roughly that 8 to 12 gigahertz range. But this one operates inside of X-band, but it's not a standard WR90. So I need to make my own. It's something that is used in order to meet the requirements for a slot-emitting uh, waveguide-fed antenna array. Now, what I've done to, in order to do that, in order to verify it, is I've 3D printed a piece here, and I've verified that meet my geometry and the size mates up to my antenna, just doing some, some checks on that account, and I have a little gold-plated connector, and that's what's going to go into my coax to waveguide transition. Now, what I have here is I have a, a chunk of aluminum, and I've slotted out the cavity that I'm going to use for that coax to waveguide transition. And this is really the, the waveguide portion of that down here. Now, all this, fairly basic. Uh, it's kind of test equipment that a lot of people are used to seeing, uh, test adapters when they're doing RF work. But why am I doing it? Why am I cutting this chunk of aluminum? Is there any purpose? Well, yeah, there's a purpose. What I want to do is I want to set up an antenna test to test the, the pattern, the gain, the directivity uh, really get an idea of what that beam angle looks like for my antenna. Now what I have here is I have this slotted antenna and this is a 10 by 10 element waveguide fed slotted array antenna. Uh, the RF signal goes in or out through this waveguide here in the back and it emits or it's received through these slots in the front. It snakes through these waveguides, comes down to this feeding waveguide here and will go into my transition. Now, my experiment that I'm setting up to do this will be taking this array, this antenna, having it some distance, and I'm going to do some tests at 10, 100, and 500 meters, and I'm most interested in that far field when that, when that beam is completely formed. I don't have to worry about phase information in order to get a good idea, a good measurement, a good pattern map of the antenna. So what I'm doing is I'm setting it up at a distance, and I'll have a, an azimuth and elevation that I'll move this in and I will be transmitting from a horn antenna. Now, a horn antenna, standard gain horn, is what I'm using. So this will be my far side, this will be my near side, and this will move as such. So I'm going to move in my theta and in my phi direction, and I will map that out. Now, in order to automate that, I'm going to use a, uh, a gimbal that has uh, the ability to move so many uh, tenths of a degree um, per uh, interval so that I won't have to worry about, okay, well, setting it up and moving it around. All that will be automated. I'll do all the data collection in an automated way. But this is just a, a practical thing that needs to be done in order to uh, determine, well, what, 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 what shape, what, what, what is it that this antenna is doing? Because uh, when we measure antennas, uh, we're often concerned with, well, how do we quantify that? When we think about a, a standard antenna, you know, just a, a dipole that goes up, we kind of have this donut shape that moves in three space is how it'll, it'll, it'll look. So that's our, like an, uh, an, what we think of like an isotropic radiator. We think of it a radiator or a receiver whose pattern is equal in three space. That's what we're measuring it relative to. So you'll see this, uh, this unit called DBI, 
that's uh, relating to the isotropic antenna. So what we're doing here is we're going to set up in order to determine whether or not my math is right <laughs> and uh, do the verification of my design and look at the, the azimuth and the elevation of the antenna. This is something that uh, you can have done at a test lab and in order to get really good sharp results uh, you can do some things in near field ranges where uh, you can go to laboratories such as uh, there's MET laboratories up in Baltimore that we'll uh, use quite often. They do a great job uh, of, of getting a lot of that pattern data and they're doing it in an anechoic chamber. But just to do a verification of our work and our math and our not just that but there's the manufacturing problem that goes along with building antenna that's what we're doing here. And we'll show some more videos uh, and as well as some blog articles showing, well, practically what does it look like for mapping the pattern of an antenna, as well as uh, looking at uh, building two of these coax to waveguide transitions, putting them on a vector network analyzer, and verifying, well, is the standing wave ratio we get the one we expect? If you have an opportunity, please visit us at duotechservices.com or follow us on Twitter. Thanks.